Alright, what's up guys? Uh, basically, this video will be about how to make a baldy NPC which also has pathfinding. See, you can yeah go around a wall. And yeah, he basically acts like the baldy in the actual game, so let's get started. Alright, let me erase my current script so because I want to show you guys how to do it. Now, let's put some uh, variables down so we can actually like customize it. So, the first variable we're going to put is um basically like how long the baldy waits until he takes another step and that will be uh let's call it step delay and i'm gonna make mine one second uh and besides also you can change this variable anytime during the skip to make it go faster if you want we're also gonna change how fast he takes a step so uh you actually don't even need to make a variable for that for, for that you can just go and set the humanoid and Alright, so to start off, you obviously need, uh, you need a humanoid, you need a rig. This won't work if you're just like doing like a... It, it won't work if you're just doing a flat image. You can put a flat image on this rig, but uh, this will only work on... This tutorial will only work on a rig, so you have to get one of these rigs. Then you can put a server script inside. It doesn't really matter what its name, just put it inside the rig. rig. Make sure it's directly under the rig. Now inside the server script is where we're gonna start scripting. Now let's put put down some constants first, like so we can customize our NPC. So first of all is like how long he waits until he he takes another step. Uh, we're gonna name that step delay. Step delay. Mine will be one second. You can make yours like faster if you want. We're also gonna change how fast he goes, and you can actually change this uh, easily by just going to humanoid, and inside of the walk speed, uh, change this. I'm gonna make my 100 because like. It takes his steps pretty fast. And the next one you're gonna change is, uh, you're gonna change like, how much, uh, like how big his step is. You could do that with uh, step length. Mine's gonna be just like six. So this is gonna help with the pathfinding too. Uh, so yeah. And our first thing we're gonna do is, we're going to put this down. Now you might be wondering what this does. This basically, Makes it where the server controls all the physics that are on this NPC. And this can make it less laggy. So, that's basically just for making it less laggy. This just goes through every single part in the rig. It just makes the server control it with this uh, this line. Now, the next thing we're going to do is... Um, we're going to put some variables down. So, uh, we're going to reference the humanoid root part of your rig. That would be your script, that parent, we've shared humanoid root part because it's the parent of the humanoid and then the humanoid root part. We're also gonna reference the humanoid, so local humanoid equals script that parent with child humanoid because it's basically the same thing as this except it's humanoid. Now the reason why we need these is these are really important for pathfinding and actually like moving uh, moving the rig. You actually don't need these, but I just do these because it's easier to like look at and it won't confuse you as much. Now the next thing I'm going to do uh, is we are going to do the pathfinding. So local pathfinding service equals game kit service pathfinding service. Make sure to use git service or it won't work. And yeah, this basically just gets uh, the Roblox default in uh, built in pathfinding like code. So I'm going to use that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing a lot in this one. so. I'll be explaining it, so it's it's okay. Now, don't freak out. Now you have this. Now, what this does is it basically just like finds the nearest player. Uh, this won't uh, this won't really work on like NPCs. If you have Bali chasing another NPC, this won't work because in this code he only detects players. Now, let me quickly go through this. This is a function, which means you can call this line of code uh, anywhere inside your script. So. Basically, we're looking through the workspace for any uh, stuff with a player, and if it has a player connected to it, and it's and it has the humanoid root part, uh, then we are going to set the, this variable to that humanoid. So basically, this is the uh, script. I mean, this is the function for getting the nearest player. So now the next thing we're gonna do is 
we are going to actually start scripting. Uh, we're actually going to make it work now. We are going to do a while true uh, loop. Now, if you actually like pay attention to like Roblox Studio, you may have heard a lot of people say, well, true loops are bad, but we're going to only use it one time in the script. And we're not going to be putting any memory leaks. So, uh, yeah, just do that. Now we're going to do task.wait and then put your step delay because this is uh, this loop is going to run every single step delay. Mine's one second, so it's going to take a step every one second. And now we are going to make our path. This is for the pathfinding. We're going to do local path equals pathfinding service create path. Uh, this basically, if you want to change this, it, the, it basically changes if Baldi can jump. I'm just gonna put this on just in case he's like stuck. We don't we can get him unstuck. And waypoint spacing, I'm actually gonna change this to our step length, because that's the step length if we're doing pathfinding. And agent radius, that is basically like um, how big the script thinks uh, Baldi is. Uh, so you can make this bigger if you want uh, the pathfinding, like if you want uh, him to like stay away from walls. Because if you make this too small. Uh, he's, he's gonna get like stuck on walls, but if you make this too big, he's gonna get, also get stuck on walls. So, uh, I just put three because that's like what a normal rig is, so you can probably play around with that one. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the nearest character. So, that's just to find nearest function because that's our function name up here. Now, if there is uh, a player at all, then uh, this if then function will run. If there's not, it's just going to keep on looping until we find the player. So if there is a player, it's going to, we're going to, we're going to actually going to do a ray cast. Now you, you might be wondering why we're going to ray cast. Uh, basically, uh, to, to prevent like Baldi from like, to make him have a good like AI. Cause like if you don't do this step, uh, I mean you can, he'll work if you don't do this step, but like he probably won't catch up to you. Because of the way we're doing the pathfinding, so we're basically, uh, I'll explain more about why we're doing the raycasting later. So these, this is the params. It's like what the raycast ignores, which is uh, it ignores the uh, body itself and the player chasing. Because this, this raycast is trying to detect if there's anything between body and the player. The direction is uh, the position minus the raycast. Now we're gonna do uh. If uh, if there's not a ray cast and uh, you and Baldi is close to player, and if Baldi is close to player, that would just be this and a magnitude. And magnitude is basically like how far away he is in numbers, and that magnitude is less than like seven. So like if he's like less than seven studs away, he's just gonna directly like just come to you, and we don't have to do any pathfinding because like there's nothing between. Baldi and the player because of, we did the ray cast. And once we do that, uh, it's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna put this in. This basically, this line is really simple. It basically just makes Baldi move to the player. And now here is the tricky part. Uh, you see, just in case a, like a glitch ever happens, it probably won't happen, but just in case, you know, uh, we're gonna make it where if Baldi still hasn't caught up to the player in five seconds, like, even when he's super near him, we're just gonna stop moving, cause like, that's weird. So, uh, this basically gets like the current time, this basically checks, uh, so yeah, this basically does it if, uh, this goes, this makes a loop go on, if Baldi reaches destination point, or it's been 5 seconds, he hasn't moved. Now, uh, now time for the pathfinding. So if there is an obstacle between Baldi and the player, or Baldi's just too far away, we're going to compute a sync, which basically it makes Roblox like we tell Roblox to like uh, calculate the path, the pathfinding. So that's calculating the pathfinding, and now we're gonna put this down. Now, when when you see this, right, it looks pretty similar to the code up here. It's not really that similar, but it's still similar. Now let me explain it. This basically it makes it where Baldi only moves the player if like he can, and if like there's, if if like the player's in a position where Baldi can like, it's impossible for Baldi to get to. He just won't move at all. 
and nodes is basically like uh, like every single part he has to go to in order to reach the player. So we're gonna we're actually gonna only make Baldi move to the third node. And that would be this script. So if it's over the third node, Baldi will just uh, stop moving. And you might be wondering why do we only want him to move the third node? And that's because he's Baldi and we only want him to move a few steps. So we don't want him to move the entire thing. So yeah. Um in this yeah, same thing as the top and that is actually pretty much it so now let's test this see if there actually like isn't bugs and you see I think it works. So he's like coming to us for every step. Check if the pathfinder works if it goes behind this wall. Can you follow? Yeah, he can. I'm pretty sure you can even put him in the, in the maze and he'll still find his way to you. Because that's just how the pathfinding works. And yeah. So that's all. And let me quickly tell you. If you want like him to be a flat image and not a 3D model. Because that's what Baldi is. You would just put a billboard GRI inside of the rig. Actually, you put it inside the humanoid root part and you put all the parts inside of the rig transparent. And I'm not going to do that right now. That takes a bit of time. So, yeah, that's all. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. The zombies are coming.